Hello and welcome to Mike Blabs. I'm Mike and I'm blabbing about Union Pacific FEF-3844, The Living Legend. That's a long title. First, we'll start with a little bit of history about the FEF class. The FEF class was a type of steam locomotive built for Union Pacific between 1937 and 1944. There are, of course, three different types of FEF locomotives, the FEF-1s, the FEF-2s, and the FEF-3s. Now, you might be wondering what FEF stands for. It's actually the wheel arrangement. For those unaware, a wheel arrangement is the configuration of wheels on a steam locomotive. Wheel arrangements usually consist of three numbers, the first one being leading, the second one being driving, and the third being trailing wheels. The leading wheels will guide the locomotive around tight curves, the driving wheels drive the locomotive forward, and the trailing wheels usually support either the cab, the smoke box, or sometimes even a bunker. Now there are locomotives with four or five number wheel arrangements. That's another story though. Back to the FEF class now. F stands for 4, E stands for 8, and the final F stands for 4, 484. Four. In 1937, Union Pacific ordered 20 FEF-type locomotives from American Locomotive Company, also known as Alco. They would go on to produce all the FEF-type locomotives for the Union Pacific. In 1939, Alco built 15 more, but with bigger cylinders and bigger driving wheels. These became the FEF-2s. Later, in 1944, 10 more were ordered, but with subtle differences from the FEF-2s. These became the FEF-3s, the last of which became 844. In 1945, Union Pacific decided to change all FEF-class locomotives from coal burners to oil burners. In 1946, the last one was converted. Of course, due to desalization, most of the FEF class were withdrawn and scrapped. However, one of each type does still survive to this day. FEF 1 814 survived at the Rail West Museum in Council Bluffs, Iowa. FEF 2 833 is at the Ogden Train Museum in Utah. There is a second FEF 3, but it's mainly a parts locomotive for 844, and just looking at it for too long depresses me beyond belief. So let's get to 844. So while most railroads were switching from steam to diesel, Union Pacific just kind of held on to the 844. They just kept her going, and going, and going, and going. Like the Energizer Bunny. Hey, let's paint it like the Energizer Bunny. Okay, let's not. While her time pulling revenue trains was mostly over, she ended up having a new life, pulling excursion trains all over the country. In fact, on a few occasions, she even double-headed with Southern Pacific 4449, the daylight, which... Boy, that is a beautiful engine. I might have to cover that someday. However, in 1962, the Pacific done goofed and registered a diesel under the number 844. So what was the steam crew to do? Well, they just tacked on a 4 on the end. So from 1962 to 1989, the Union Pacific 844 became the UP 8444. During this time, she was repainted in the Greyhound color scheme, which consists of two tones of gray and a yellow stripe down the middle. In 1989, the 844 diesel was retired, thus 8444 could return to being 844 once again. If you're worried about the diesel though, don't worry, she has a new life. She now runs excursion trains at Nevada Southern Railroad Museum in Nevada. Unfortunately, this would not be the last of the Steam 844's troubles. Henderson, Colorado, July 22nd, 2018. UP 844 strikes and kills a pedestrian. It was ruled as an accident, but that doesn't make the death any less tragic. However, I don't want to end this video on a sad note, so let's talk about one more story. November 4th, 1996, Archer Hill, Wyoming. A UP freight train stalls on the hill. Without another locomotive to push, this could cause delays for hours. However, down the line comes 844. The decision was made. 
and 844 push the train up the hill. I swear that sounds like Thomas the Tank Engine fan fiction. Afterwards, a triumphant 844 and her crew head home to Cheyenne. So through the ups, the downs, the good times, the bad, 844 will keep on moving. And really, that's all you can ask for.